gratitude and with respect, we begin by recognizing the First Nations on whose traditional land we make our spiritual homes, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Nunu. We acknowledge and regret that this history has rarely been respected. We commit to the just relationships in the present. Among First Nations everywhere, we recognize Earth as our mother, on whose water, air, and soil we depend on for our lives and our well-being. In the midst of a climate crisis, we acknowledge that as a species, we have not acted with respect for our precious planet. We commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or do, who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe but who are asking much questions. Welcome to visitors and to familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents mothers, fathers, youth, and children, couples, and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, gender identities, abilities, and sexual orientation. Welcome to each who is seeking an understanding of community and what it means to accompany one another. As we come together as church, we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. Well, good morning everyone again and welcome to our hybrid worship service for Parkminster United Church on this fourth Sunday in Advent and our pageant Sunday. Uh, we want to thank everyone who's worked so hard and been so creative once again to bring together this year's virtual pageant and we can't wait to share it with all of you here in person and all of you at home uh, to celebrate this season together. Uh, whether you are worshiping with us here in the sanctuary, whether you are with us on Zoom, whether you are with us on Facebook, we are so glad that you've decided to take this time to gather in community, and we hope that this is a time of reflection, restoration, and renewal for the week ahead. And at this time, I'm going to turn things over to Joe, who has some announcements for us this morning. Yeah, so if you do, if you are here in the sanctuary and you have a, an announcement you'd like to make, please just proceed over to the, to the floor uh, lectern there, and uh, we'll make sure we get to you. If you have an announcement on Zoom, just uh, type the word announcement into the uh, chat, and we'll make sure to uh, get to you as well. Uh, again, for those joining us on Facebook, know that there's a lag between Zoom and Facebook, so if you have a blessing or concern that you'd like to share later on, just make sure that you uh, type it in sooner rather than, uh, rather than uh, later. Uh, I saw Wendy Watson has an announcement uh, that she would like me to share. She says, uh, please, you got to take this off. Is, is my mic on? Team, is Joe's mic okay? Can we just do a quick test? No. No. Could one of you run up the handheld uh, to me? Like Heather, do you want to? Yeah, where is Wendy? Wendy Watson? I don't have it. It must have been a direct message, oh, Joe. Yeah, Why don't, can I have Jennifer Allen share hers at this sure. time? So Jennifer, if you want to turn your camera and mic on, um, we'll have you do your announcement first. Just let me spotlight you. One second here. Okay, Jen, I think I've spotlighted you. <laughs> I don't All know. right. Thank you. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. I'm Jennifer Allen, Chair of Church Council. And here I am again. And what a difference a week makes when you're in a pandemic. A pandemic. As you all know, I'm sure, the province has implemented 50% capacity limits on indoor venues uh, this past week. And while churches weren't specifically named in the limit, as good citizens and out of concern for our, our congregation and our members, we will be discussing the implications and actions we need to take. So this, um, this afternoon, the COVID-19 working group will be meeting to discuss options for worship services, including the upcoming Christmas services. And we'll figure out how to best limit risk for our in-person worship participants and leaders. And we'll be communicating any changes as soon as we possibly can 
Uh, and really, as usual, our, our goal is to make sure everyone is healthy and safe. So that's it. Thank you. Test, Test one. one. Oh, there we go. Uh, we yeah, Wendy, Wendy Watson, Watson says, uh, please, please thank everyone who donated, donated money and cookies for the uh, YW Emergency Shelter Christmas dinner. Over $300 was collected to buy turkeys and essentials for the residents. Special thanks to Elna Robertson for once again organizing the outreach. So much thanks to the outreach committee for, for doing that. So just checking here to see if there's any other announcements. Okay. Um, from Nancy. Nancy Dykstra? Yeah, you read it aloud. Okay. Uh, Nancy, Dykstra Nancy Dykstra has an announcement this morning. Uh, you are welcome to meet with Siham Fadi and the Al Mohammed family tomorrow afternoon. We will meet outside following guidelines in Nancy Dykstra's backyard. We assume all will wear masks. We have hot drinks and you are welcome to bring snacks if you like. Please, Please let, let Lori McKim Lang know if you're planning to come. We're meeting from 1 to 3 uh, p.m. And perhaps, Lori, I saw that Lori was on. Lori, maybe if you want to put your email in the chat, um, that would let people get a hold of you. Uh, also, just uh, a reminder that uh, this Tuesday, um, the longest night of the year is also our longest night service at 7 p.m. And it's a service for anyone who has a hard time uh, during the Christmas season um, because of uh, some grief or could be a difficult family situation. Uh, it's just a time to feel included and part of the Christmas story. Uh, maybe when you're feeling down and um, all around you, there seems to be lots of joy and you're feeling somehow left, left out. So please join us either here in the sanctuary or um, via Zoom or Facebook on Tuesday at 7 p.m. So not seeing any other announcements uh, at, uh, at, at this time. So let us continue our time of gathering as we light our Advent candles. love. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. Today, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we are lighting the Advent candle of love. As we heard in 1 Corinthians, Christianity puts love at the center of our faith, the center of our being. The greatest of these is love. This proclamation of the importance of love puts human relationships front and foremost in a well-lived life. If the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us anything, it is that we can't go through life alone. There is no happiness in isolation. We need each other and we need to love each other. Love has been very evident in our Parkminster family as we have navigated the pandemic together. You have continued to love each other with compassion, thoughtfulness, and unselfish acts of kindness. Love was evident in our card ministry, your phone calls, your emails, your Zoom meetings, and your gifts of food and time. Love was front and center as you became more aware of the needs of vulnerable peoples and the disparity in our world. You helped feed and nurture a better tent city. You responded to the challenges of better understanding truth and reconciliation with our Indigenous neighbours. And you responded with love to the needs of the global human community through our resettlement committee. During this past year, I have become a grandmother twice. Love is hearing and seeing both my sons share their wonderful news that they would become fathers. 
Love is the hugs, smiles, and sparkling eyes of baby Louisa and baby Leroy when I am lucky enough to be with them. Love is watching the interaction between mother and child. Yesterday, I saw love through my friends Doug and Sandra Renton as they ran their annual online basketball silent auction, auction and tournament for KW Suicide Prevention Society. Doug and Sandra lost their son Jacob, Lucas's best friend, to suicide on December 23rd, a few years ago. They have channeled their grief and love for Jacob into a love that gives of themselves for the sake of the development of the rest of society. They want to help prevent suicide, especially among our young athletes. Their love guides them in a positive light and centers on doing good for others. As we rapidly approach this Christmas season, let us keep love at the center of our relationships and at the center of all our decisions. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Today marks the end of our Advent journey. Each week we lit a candle to remind us of the promises of God dwelling among us. Hope, peace, and joy. We light these candles again this morning. Today, on the final Sunday of Advent, we come to the promise at the very heart of God's revelation in Jesus, love. As we look to our pandemic-weary world and the way fear and anxiety manifests as belligerence and even violence, as we enter more deeply into the climate crisis and see the powerful refuting the prophetic voices of science, we wonder, is there a role for love in our politics in our economics. In our struggle, in our wrestling with this question, we light this candle in faith, remembering Mary's song. We remember Mary's awe as she reflects on being chosen to bear God to the world. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. Surely from now all generations will be blessed. Love enters us, guides us in our loneliness, empty of our ego and control. Love enters and guides when we risk in spite of fear. And so as we light this candle, let us rejoice in the possibilities of love to transform our world.
God of pure self-giving love, help us to reject the world's economy of scarcity. Help us to embrace your economy of love and abundance, an economy where love begets more love, where we have enough and are enough to do your will in the world. Help us to bear witness to your love as Mary did by taking faithful, defiant action to bring your creation back into harmony and balance. May it be so that generations not yet born may look back and see us as channels of blessing. Amen. So as we come before the central, one of the central stories of our faith as told through the creativity of our Parkminster families, let us just pause and pray that we might find a word of love, a word of hope that's meant for us and for our world. Let us pray. Holy One, help us to give voice to the world-altering news. Love is coming to dwell among us. Quicken our imaginations to find new and creative ways to proclaim the birth of Jesus. Amen. Song till the morning. 
child is joy in our song. The last shall be first, and the weak shall be strong, and none shall be afraid. Joy is a song that welcomes the dawn, telling the world of our Savior is born. When God is a child, there's joy in our song. The last shall be first, and the weak shall be strong, and none shall be afraid. Wow, that was a great pageant this year. I'm so proud of you. You did a great job. You are the best shepherd I've ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> I already said my story. In fact, I wish. What's going on, Dora? What do you wish? The world wasn't so scary. Where is the house? No, the world. Where are you going? Well, stories sometimes help. When I'm afraid of, or I'm worried, I remember that I'm just part of a story that is way bigger than myself. And God's story is full of people who are sometimes afraid. You know, even the Christmas story is during a time when many people were afraid of many things, just like us. It all begins in Nazareth, a town in Galilee with a woman named Mary. <clears throat> it came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold peace on the earth goodwill to all from heaven's all gracious king the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing for lo the days are hastening on by prophets seen of old when with the ever circling years shall come the time foretold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing Welcome to my home. Do you, do you want to talk to me? We haven't met before, have we? Do you want to hear what I have to say? <gasps> I do. I mean, let me start over. Greetings to everyone. God is with you. Um, what kind of a greeting is that? <laughs> do me not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you are going to have a baby boy. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the Most High. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the most 
most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Also, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby. Even though people thought it would be impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. Wait, was all of that a question? Oh, hmm, good question. Uh, yes. Here am I the servant of God. Let it be with me according to this message. I need to see Elizabeth. justice for the poor she dreamed that kings oppressed no more when she dreamed that dreaming mary one holy day an angel came with voice of wind and eyes of flame he promised blessed would be her name when he spoke to dreaming mary then she spoke rejoicing in her savior she spoke of justice for the poor she spoke that kings oppressed no more when she spoke that dreaming mary Tell you something. You are so blessed among women, and the baby in your womb is also blessed. The moment the sound of your voice hit my ear, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Here, feel it. Elizabeth, I'm also bursting with good news. God took one to look at me and look, I'm the most blessed woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. I'm talking about the God who not the powerful, off their thrones lifted up the lowly. So um can I stay with you for a few minutes? Sure you can. Would you like some ice cream? summer through the heat on the hill she hurried as one who went with a will she danced in the sunlight when the day was done her heart knew no evening who carried the sun it's pregnant married yet and the law says that is not good not good at all <laughs> she claims that this child the child she carries is actually god's child my only option 
option is to marry her and then divorce her quietly. That will save my reputation at least. But she will be disgraced. I don't know what to do. I am afraid. Oh, Mary. The child the mystery And why is Joseph packing a bag? That's a really good question. This is a larger than life story with parts that are inexplicable and some are mysterious. I bet she does. This is a story full of questions, and we don't always have the answers, but it's good to wonder together. But I do have the answer to one question. Why is Joseph packing that bag? For that answer, we have to meet the emperor. Caesar Augustus. Woo! First, I want to say you're welcome for all the great things I've done for you. There has never been an emperor as powerful and as glorious as me. Yay! Yeah, yay, yeah, Caesar! My empire is vast. You people are obedient. I'm saving 
you all, all of you, and you owe me so much, so much. Citizens, I want to count you. Yes, let's get a good head count so that you can pay me what I am owed. Go to your hometown and register your family so you can show proper appreciation of my awesomeness. Yay! Woo-hoo! I decree it to be so. Farewell, my faithful children. May you know my magnificent ways. Farewell. The Bible doesn't really tell us anything about the birth of the Christ child. It just says that Mary had the baby and wrapped him in strips of cloth that put him in a feeding trough. That's it. But those are important details to remember for the next part of our story. It takes place in a field. There were shepherds living outside the fields near, in the fields nearby, watching over their sheep. They were about, about to be frightened by some powerful messengers from God, but they would soon realize 
that they did not have to be afraid. Glory to God in the highest. <clears throat> Glory to God. Glory to God. Is this thing even working? Am I on mute? Are you people even listening? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah of the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Good news for all the people. The Messiah is born a Savior. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace among those whom God favors. That is all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Yes, we are going. We have to go. Do we bring the sheep? I think we have to. Uh, what were those signs again? Oh, they message to the We won't forget. Let's go. You too, sheep. Come on. How the angel had described. The baby was wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Friends, we have seen something amazing tonight. I don't know about you, but it feels like the world is changing. Yeah, but why do we think you got to see it? Nobody cares about us shepherds. We're poor and we don't have very much power. I have no idea. But the baby's mother, Mary, acted like this was exactly what was supposed to happen. Like this was meant for people like us. Maybe this baby will lift up the lowly. And bring down the lofty. Wouldn't that be something? Sure would. I believe there is no limit to what this baby can do. Uh, hey, shepherds, uh, was that star there last night? I've ever seen that one before. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night. 
We are the wise ones. Wise people. The magi. More like scientists, really. We're actually astronomers. We study the stars. We study the stars so well that we can detect the smallest, tiniest, teensiest change. Wait, Wait a minute. minute! There's a new star. We must follow our scientific instincts and find out why there's a new star in the sky. Let's begin our journey. Those wise people were really brave. They honored the king God had chosen, brought him presents, disobeyed the orders of King Herod, and made it home safely. They were brave and determined. Everyone in the story was, I think. From Mary and Joseph to the shepherds and the magi, they all recognized that the birth of Jesus was going to change the world. But this isn't really the end. This is just the beginning. Jesus is born, he grows up, he changes water into wine, he teaches, he heals, he flips tables, he... Wow, Jesus' birth is really just the beginning. We still have so much we could talk about, but it's late. Tonight, let's focus on this one special moment, this one night that brought us Jesus. God's story is unfolding more good news every day, and in the end, all things will be made right. That doesn't mean we won't be afraid along the way, but we can trust that love and justice will have the final word. Speaking of the final word, let's have a final word from Mary, the mother of Jesus. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, God, have looked with favor on the lowliness of your servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For you, the mighty one. Done great things for me. And holy is your name. Your mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. You, O oh God, have shown strength with your arm. You have scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. You, God, have brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with food and sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servant Israel. In remembrance of your mercy, according to the promises you made to our ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah, and to their descendants forever. Fields and floods 
rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as. The curse is found. He rules the earth with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders. I want to thank uh, everyone that participated in our pageant this year. We seem to have a little issue with one of our videos, the Magi video we didn't get to see in whole, and it, it's, a, it's a classic, so we'll try and figure out a way to share that with you. But a thank you to everyone who participated in our pageant this year. Friends, it's the season of giving, and in our faith tradition, giving is a response of gratitude for all that has been given to us. Your gifts are not only a means to a better world, but a declaration of faith, faith that we are not alone, faith that we are looked after, faith that we are all connected. So thank you for your faith and the ways it leads you to generously give of your time, talent, and treasure. Let us bless these gifts. Thank you, loving God, for this tremendous offering, this acting out of the Christmas story that we just received. We now present our offering so that through the work and mission of this faith community, we may continue to act out the Christmas story day by day. We offer our faith, our hope, our love, and ourselves as we give this offering. Amen. And so, friends, let us continue in this time of prayer to reflect on and share in the yearnings, the struggles, and the joys of our lives. Uh, we're wondering if you have joys and concerns that you would like to share with us this week. For those of you in the sanctuary, if you would like to share from the speaker's podium, you're welcome. For those of you at home via Zoom and Facebook, you're welcome to use the chat feature to share those with us. We do have some that we're going to share with you first this morning. Again, a big thank you to our pageant participants and especially the young people of Parkminster. We are really blessed with a lot of creativity and talent. Uh, we continue our prayers for Lonnie, who has been diagnosed with COVID. Uh, a reminder, she does love some emails, but was asking for no phone calls, but also so good to see her via Zoom this morning. We have a birthday that we have to celebrate, a very happy fifth birthday to Naomi Bruce. And I think Naomi is here with us at the back. She's kind of waving at the back. You can turn around those in the sanctuary and wave. That's Naomi, and Naomi turned five. So very happy birthday to you, Naomi. That was on Thursday. Uh, we want to offer our prayers for Dorothy Duxbury and family as they grieve the loss of Dorothy's son, Clark. There was a private family service held yesterday at Urban Good. We also keep Elna Robertson and family in our prayers as we prepare to celebrate Les's life next week. And we give thanks for Les's many contributions to Parkminster and beyond and hold all who cared for him in our prayers. We offer prayers for Lori Holmes, who is currently in hospital with pneumonia. We hold Lori and her family in the light at this time. And Lynn McNiff asking for prayers. She's having a, a really bad case of her lymphedema flaring up right now, but also asks for prayers for her son in Tanzania, who is going through a difficult time with family health issues. And so there are a few blessings and concerns here. So first of all, lots of prayers, uh, lots of thanks for the pageant 
uh, being expressed um, today. Um, yeah, Lisa Hicknell is sharing that, if you can believe it, Abby turned 19 uh, on Thursday. So happy birthday, Abby. Um, Laura Ford uh, is sharing that she is in hospital, uh, home tomorrow, and um, have has suddenly been accepted into a fully wheelchair accessible apartment. So we'll be moving to Cambridge early in the new year. The move, move wasn't anticipated, but is very much welcome. So Laura, thank you for sharing that news uh, with us. And the Fondon family, please hold our grandpa slash opa in your prayer. So that's from the Fondon uh, family uh, this morning. So not seeing any other. Oh, one more. Oh, one more. Okay. okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jocelyn, Jocelyn uh, Alexander. Alexander. Prayer of thanks again for everyone who helped uh, them out in the last few weeks. Everyone is feeling better now, and Jocelyn's back is almost better. So thank you for that, Jocelyn. Much, very much appreciated. So friends, let's take these joys and concerns into our time of prayer and reflection. Let us pray. God of angels caroling through the heavens with cotton ball wings and coat hanger frames. God of shepherds in the fields, God of three-year-old lambs searching for their parents. God of wise ones from the east, God of magi whose headgear keeps falling to one side. God of a Bethlehem stable and living rooms, sanctuaries, kitchens, and sunrooms on Zoom. We pray to you this morning. Thank you, loving God, for Christmas, for gifts and decorations, for friends and visitors, for turkey and good food and drink, for the opportunity to give to others. Thank you for Jesus who shows us your ways of love acceptance, and justice. We are in from the cold, and so, God, we pray for all who are poor and cold and hungry like the shepherds, that good news of comfort may come to all in want. We pray for all who are searching like the wise ones. May all find a place to leave their gifts and their troubles. We pray for all who are busy, hurried, distracted, like the innkeeper. May all know the peace that comes from welcoming the stranger. We pray for all, like King Herod, who have power. May it be used for the good of all people. As we look to the week's news, we remember those in Kentucky and surrounding states in the United States where violent storms and tornadoes last weekend destroyed homes, businesses, churches, and lives. We pray for our siblings in the southern Philippines where super typhoon Rai is forcing thousands to take shelter and flee as the storm makes landfall. As worries about the Omicron variant rise, we give ongoing thanks for all those working in healthcare and on the front lines. We give thanks for vaccine boosters and pray for an equal sharing of vaccines and resources around the world. We pray for a continued commitment to right relations with indigenous peoples, for the ongoing work of anti-racism. And in a time of silence, we offer the prayers that are upon our hearts this day. We pray asking to help us see the world as you see it, Holy One, as a play, as a pageant full of human quirks and missteps, dotted with grace and unexpected joy, a bit nerve-wracking, a bit glorious, dancing on the verge of wonder. Help us to see life as a pageant, Holy One, an event 
in which we will all eventually find our way to you. Amen. So friends, go from this time of worship to be people of love. Invite love by loving those you see regularly. Start by loving your community. Invite love by loving those you do not know. How do your actions affect the rest of God's creation? Invite love by praying for our world. And in this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share love. And so as you go out into the wonder of God's creations, share love, joy, peace, and hope with all those you meet. Amen. Love be with you, love forever. Love be with you, my friends, till we meet again. May God be with you.